I know we had some trouble with Echo and Discord for a while, and somebody who was on there with me, I can't remember who, figured out how to fix it on their end, I think. So I didn't have to do anything, but I don't know exactly what they did. Yeah, this is ramen. <laughs> Did I hear something? Let me turn this on. Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, Falco. Oh, okay. It's working. It is working. I turned the music off, though. Can you still hear me as I'm like walking around the room? I can hear you, but uh, I can hear you twice, and I hear myself. You hear yourself once, and you hear me twice? Yeah, something like that. So I have to have my audio output on because it's going into the stream. Um, I think. I want to. I want to try and figure this out. Thanks for joining. So um, on your end, um, I'm wondering if maybe I just have to do something on my end. Maybe I can deafen. No, that's not right. Can you still hear me, Falco? Oh, you hear me twice, once through Twitch and once through Discord. So mute your mute your Twitch video stream. Or mute the Discord one. <laughs> one or the other, I think. If, if I mute the Discord, I automatically mute my my uh, microphone as well. So I'll try to mute the Twitch. Yeah, I think maybe try to yeah. mute the <clears throat> the Twitch stream is probably the right thing to do because you'll get all my audio through Discord, whatever I'm streaming on Twitch. Okay. I'm trying that now. Can you hear me? I can. I can still hear you. Okay. And there is no delay or something. There's actually no delay. So. I, I hope there's no delay on Discord. It usually is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, just that I, I see your lips move only five seconds later, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, pay no attention to that. <laughs> so how are you doing? What are you working on? Uh, I I'm actually working on the uh, MIDI encoder you, you told me about um, about a month ago and I've been working on and off for two weeks now. Yeah. And I that well the problem is I don't really know uh, Python. So I'm I'm learning Python more than I'm doing the, uh, the encoder. Yeah. And I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty far already. Um I, I have the encoder part, I think that's working. Um I have uh, written a little interface so that I can uh, type or, or play notes on a little piano. And, uh, and that seems to be working fine. I was trying to get some, some deep sounds, but that's in Python sound is not very good. But through the Py game interface, I can, well, I found some tricks how to make some, some, some simple beats is okay, but now I'm trying to make chords. That's a lot difficult, a lot more difficult. But what I really want to do is read a MIDI file in one stream and get that as a, an output directly in the encoder form. Yeah, that's but a good, MIDI, good goal. Yeah. But the MIDI standard uh, is is written uh, in anticipation of a lot of changes. So there are a lot of... Mm -hmm. MIDI 2 is coming out soon. They're, they're, just, they're just deciding what MIDI 2 is going to entail. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're not telling anybody what the proposals are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope it will be uh, backwards compatible, but uh, I don't. The, I don't the, know. The strange, the strangest thing I find is that they have two ways to um, how do you say that to to determine the delay between two events, and um, I have a number of MIDI files, all classical music, and one of them is is. It's working. It's working in, in Winamp, but, uh, but the, the, well, the the part that is supposed to tell me which kind of 
timing they use is nil, and so I don't know, there must be a third way. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm still working on it, so it's, it's, not, it's not finished. Okay. <clears throat> Are you talking about intervals between notes, or like the overall timing of a, compo a composition? Well, every event that is uh, coding for a note, or m more than one note sometimes, has a, a number. But this number doesn't mean anything. This number is just a, a reference number. Mm -hmm. And to calculate the, the time in, in microseconds, or in milliseconds, sorry, milliseconds, you need to multiply it through uh, with another number. And that number can be uh, one of two categories. And in each category, it, it has to be com uh, computed in a different way. And so, so you have um, something like maybe two categories, and each category, one of them is four different types, and the other one is 500 different types. But you have to calculate it the right way. And depending on a number of codes that you don't have in the beginning of the stream, you, you get eventually to a number like 125 milliseconds or 4 milliseconds or whatever. So you, you have to get the information in, in, at different positions in the stream. Um, and as I said, it, it looked fine. The one of the files contains a zero. And so and it, it does work in Winamp, so I, I don't know. Winamp must know something that I don't know. Uh, yeah, probably. I, this sounds vaguely familiar. I, I tried to do this years ago. So I don't, you probably know a lot more than I ever did. but. It's that, that problem that you're describing sounds vaguely familiar with MIDI. It's something you have to figure out yourself. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll keep working on it. And I, I'd love to, to show you, or that you can test it. I'd love to uh, deny that it's something that is worth using. But as I said, it's my first uh, Python program, so it it probably be quite, quite bad. So I have a yeah. lot of room for improvement anyway. So if you want a simple test, I mean, I know you want to take a MIDI file and, and, turn, and encode it, basically. But that's, you, you got to get there. But once you get to that point, you could just make a MIDI file that just has a series of simple notes, you know, nothing, <clears throat> nothing complicated. Just like, you know, in the HTM school example, just like four notes over and over, you should be able to test the TM on it that way. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, maybe, maybe I should. It should predict. It should start <clears throat> predicting that accurately pretty quickly if you're encoding it right. I mean, but I mean, you can do that with just setting up different blocks. But you know, it'll at least test the basics mechanism of the encoder in the context of HTM. The, the encoder, I think, is working because because I can play uh, uh, I can play with the little piano that I program. So uh, the, the interface is working. The uh, uh, the encoder is playing. Uh, I have some beeps, but they're not very good yet. I can I can fix that a little bit. And uh, I even have a, a file interface, very limited file interface uh, loading, so to load a file into the system. But uh, reading the notes, the actual notes in a stream, and then sending them through the encoder, mm -hmm. that's uh, that's still. Right, my, so my biggest problem is not writing it. My biggest problem is motivation. I was always had this problem. I just need to force myself to get to work, and HTM is probably the most important thing right now in my life. So it's really I can't get to work with that. I mean, really good. <laughs> well, but, um, every day a little bit, and every day I, I, I force myself a little more to do something. Yeah, I I know what you mean. <laughs> it's slow progress. Yes, I guess. Yes. But this is hard. This is hard stuff. There are very few people in the world that understand this at the level. Like, understand <clears throat> why HTM is important for building AGI. So, I mean, you're at the bleeding edge here. Yeah, I, I still don't understand why not everyone is jumping on that. I mean, not everyone, but at least everyone who knows a little bit about neural networks or anyway, I mean, the way I tell this to my friends is um, like Google and Baiku and, and Amazon, they're all building this extremely performance steam engine, and you guys are building a jet engine. 
I mean, it's not working, it's not flying, but you know that there's something different. I mean, you have to leave just one little white paper to know that there was something fundamentally different. And, I mean, if I was Brooks, I, I would be banging on your door and say, hey, uh, we want to work together. I, I want to buy you guys up. I don't know what, but I don't understand. I don't understand why they, <coughs> I really don't understand. Either they are copying what you're doing in their basements without telling anyone, or there's something. I mean, I have a friend who is a very good programmer, and when I was talking to him about that, and I said, look, I don't understand why no one is, is as excited as I am. His, his reply was, well, the method must be doing something wrong. It must be not working, because otherwise everyone would see that. Yeah, it's, <coughs> it's just because you can't, make money right now like you can in the deep learning field. It's, I think it's a lot, it's about money and application. And people don't want to invest a lot of money in unproven research, research that's been unproven in the market, you know? So they don't. <laughs> it's up to people like Jeff, who um, is a self-made millionaire, to put all of this funding into the research for this, which is, Silly too, because when I read on intelligence, I was like, this is it. This is the way we're gonna make AGI, is we're gonna understand the brain, and and I was like, that, that's obviously is the way we're gonna do it. And um, even after I joined Dementa, I was like, everybody's gonna realize this. And any moment, everybody's gonna realize this. And that was yeah. almost, uh, well, it's over seven years ago. So I think it just takes time and persistence because it's a big, shift it's a big change it's a big idea and it's going to change everything you know and and so that's hard for people to uh, to grasp yeah maybe i, I still don't understand why google and, and because i mean you say that they're not making money with it but i mean have you heard of thorium thorium reactors thorium Yes, clean, clean um, um, fission energy. No, I haven't. Anyway, well, no, it's a, it's an American invention, and it, it, it got side railed and then got no longer supported. Well, the Germans built a, a, a thorium reactor uh -huh. uh, 50 years after the Americans did, and the Chinese built it almost stone by stone, and they rebuilt it in China. Yeah. Why? They, they invested. I don't know, something like a billion dollars just to get that on the road. It's not making money. It's not expected to make money in the next 10 years. But, but they want technology. And there are, what was it, they, I think they trained 100 PhD students just to work on that project. Because they know it's going to change the world. Because they know they need the energy. They know that they are going to have a big problem in, in, the, in the next decade. decade. And I mean, how enthusiastic I am about thorium is nothing compared to artificial intelligence. So you're not going to tell me that the Chinese are not looking and turning over every rock in the world to find out a way how to make artificial intelligence, even if it's dead-end technology. And I don't understand why the Americans are not doing the same. Uh, so, so I, I that's. I know, I know. It, it, I agree with you. I, I was, I was, I've been um, uh, confused that more people weren't doing what we're doing for as long as I've worked here. It, like I said, since I read the book, I, it felt like that was the right thing to do, and nobody was doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so at least we're doing it, and then I mean, the community is interested in what's going on too. Yeah, I will. Yeah, it's live. We're live. Falco's live with me on on the stream. We're just we're chatting. In Discords. <laughs> yeah, we're in Discord. If you if any, if you want to join, go. Well, I think I have a a link here. Yeah, <clears throat> if anybody wants to join the voice the Discord, you can. You're learning R, picking on a new language. Cool. I have never tried R, but I've heard that the R users group in the Bay Area is a really nice community. <laughs> 